are watching Germantown Municipal Television, your source for everything Germantown. Hello and welcome to GMSD's Spotlight on Excellence. My name is Jason Manuel and I have the honor of serving as the superintendent of the Germantown Municipal School District. One of the things that makes Germantown a great place to live is our exceptional school system. The challenge is defining what makes our schools exceptional. Is it the large amount of parental involvement? Is it remarkable teachers and dedicated students? Is it rich, rigorous academic programs? The answer is for our school system and our city, Germantown is greater than the sum of all its parts. We would like to take some time each month to highlight and show the community just some of the exceptional things happening in your district. We are proud of these programs and individuals because they exemplify excellence in our schools. For today's show, we will focus on our growing STEM program in both our middle and high schools. STEM is an academic program focused on science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, STEM. Our STEM classes bring these elements together in a cross-curricular, hands-on learning environment. This program really gives our students a chance to apply science and engineering principles to solve real-world problems. In this environment, they can also use the skills they learn in other disciplines, combined with higher-order thinking skills, to create something with real-world applications. Today, I have invited Missy Renshaw, our 6th through 12th Curriculum Instructional Coordinator and STEM Supervisor for the District. Missy, welcome to the first annual GMSD Focus on Excellence. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Tell me a little bit about how you got involved with STEM and what's your background. My background started actually when I was a kid. I, actually, I loved STEM before it was called STEM. Um, I would take things apart, the radio, um, those little electronic games, and, bef and I just knew I had a passion for that sort of learning. And a lot of kids come to us with that sort of passion just to uh, be inquisitive. Uh, and then in German, uh, Germantown High School, which is where I actually went, I majored, uh, took computer programming for three years, and that's what set me on the course in college to uh, pursue a computer science degree. Uh, but after sitting in the lab for hours and hours, because we didn't have laptops back then, mm -hmm. um, I realized uh, I, I really wanted to be more involved with people and switched to math education. So my uh, degree is actually mathematics, and mm -hmm. I taught math for 18 years in uh, Briarcrest and Collierville High School. Uh, and worked with different uh, competitions like Math Counts, uh, mm -hmm. which even though we don't call those things STEM, they are STEM. Mm -hmm. STEM is such, such a broad definition. Um, but I also had the opportunity of working with the Shelby Scholar Summer Institute, which is the, um, the camp we used to do for two weeks where we would have kids come in for true, like problem-based scenarios mm -hmm. where, for example, one year we did the earthquake in Japan. Um, how would we go in and rebuild? How would we restore? Um, we gave them challenges and missions they had to complete. So seeing students become so engaged in that learning um, just made me realize we need to do this more in our classrooms, um, not just in summer camps. So that kind of set me on the course. And then last year I had the opportunity in our merged district to uh, be the STEM advisor. And that was through the Career and Technical Education Department. And I uh, had the opportunity of going in at 39 schools, middle schools and high schools, with all levels of STEM programs. Um, learned a lot about what to do and what not to do, mm -hmm. what works, what doesn't, uh, what all the labs need. Um, so through that experience, I realized um, all, all schools need a STEM program, not just a STEM class, but STEM integrated into the curriculum. Um, so that's um, a large part of the, the, what I've done so far. And also there's a West Tennessee STEM hub, which in the city of Tennessee, we have six hubs throughout the state. And we have one called the West Tennessee hub which is a phenomenal resource for students and teachers. Um, their goal is to actually just prepare students for the STEM workforce. And they have um, a lending library for teachers. They, I mean, so they're an awesome place to go for teachers and students to, to prepare themselves for STEM in the future. 
Why do, you, why do you think it's growing so much? It seems like, yes, there's always been STEM, but it seems recently like there's been a big push or a big increase in districts offering STEM programs and also what the state is getting involved with. What do you think is driving that, that push? I think the thing driving that is just the fact, like you said, um, that it's real world based. It's problem solving, application um, across the nation. We see this need for these, for these new jobs that are being created. In fact, we're preparing kids for jobs that don't even yet exist. We've heard that and we've heard all the statistics about how the workforce needs skilled workers and the push now is to prepare our kids for those types of jobs because it's so different. It's different than what we're used to. Um, kids need to be collaborative and communicate and develop those, I call them STEM competencies, um, just to be able to problem solve and collaborate together. Well, how, you mentioned the students, the mm -hmm. kids. How do you think this relates to them? What do you think sparks their interest? Um, the fact that, that relate is a key word there. It's relevant to them. Um, they're given choices. You know, they're not just told, and it's not about just going and building something for the sake of building it. Um, it's rooted in a problem, and it's a problem that interests them. Like you, typically, teachers will give students a choice as to how they're going to solve the problem, and so it's relevant to what, what they like and what they want to learn more about. Uh, whether it's in medicine or whether it's in engineering or robotics, um, there are many options for them. Well, you mentioned the high school. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I was excited about was that you brought a new STEM class and program to Houston High School. Tell us a little bit about some of the projects that they have done this year. Okay, that was an exciting part of what I was able to do um, because we do have this national, uh, I mean the state standards for STEM mm -hmm. that I served on a team to help, to help write. And Krista Phillips is our new STEM teacher at Houston High School, and she was right on board with taking that course and getting those kids involved. Um, and that program is growing. We're gonna have the, the second version of that course next year. So we have STEM foundation, we have STEM applications, and it can continue into a more of a work-based uh, practicum, extern uh, internship, externship experience for students. Um, and it has just really taken off. And that's just one facet of the program at Houston. Um, a lot of the teachers are also implementing it in their classrooms, not mm -hmm. just with a STEM course, but in the math and science classes, even a history teacher who's interested in, in implementing STEM. Um, and that's what it's all about. It's about the, the transdisciplinary, bringing it all together. How does it all relate? Um, teachers working together. And I've seen great collaboration at Houston High School with mm -hmm. the teachers. Um, we have Mr. Juno with the IT department. We have Ms. Brommer with computer programming. Uh, we have Dr. Ducey and, and all the science teachers actually, but um, who have stepped out and they are helping Krista get her STEM program off the ground with the clubs and the competitions. Uh, they're doing VEX robotics. They're doing uh, construction where they engineer uh, an object out of cans in a mm -hmm. limited amount of time. They did the engineering day and had great success there. So it's all about letting the students plug in and find their interest and develop those skills they need for the future. Well, you mentioned adding courses at the high mm -hmm. school. Are there any other ways that you think that we are going to grow STEM in our district? Yes, uh, I think a lot of us have interest in that, not just me, but one of them, um, I like to see K through 12 STEM for all students. Uh, and the elementary schools, um, they're great. there's great curriculum out there that I think we could implement. Uh, right now we have middle school programs. I like to see those continue to grow. And also um, we have recently just formed a, a STEM committee for the district to help with grant writing because we know that all these things take uh, nice equipment. Uh, we like to get a NOW robot, which is a humanoid robot um, to interact with, with the students and learn coding. Uh, so we have great plans for Germantown Municipal School District in STEM. Well, I'm excited to see the things that are coming in the future with STEM. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for having me. We, when we will return, we will be talking to one of our curriculum technology trainers. Please stay with us. Hello, I'm Germantown Mayor Mike Palazzolo. I want to let you know about something special you'll be seeing in your Germantown water bill this month. In cooperation with the Germantown Education Foundation, the City of Germantown is asking residents to fill the fountain of knowledge. Donations to the Germantown Education Foundation directly support academic programs in the Germantown Municipal School District. To donate, please fill out the form, return it with your water bill. You can make a one-time donation or monthly contribution. For more information, visit www.germantowneducationfoundation.org 
and thank you for supporting Germantown. Cinderella found the pet that fits her perfectly. Tiana gave her pet the royal treatment. Belle found beauty where no one else did. And you can too. Share your heart. Share your love. Bring home your forever friend. Make a shelter pet part of your world. Happily Ever After begins at theshelterpetproject.org. You are watching Germantown Municipal Television, your source for everything Germantown. Welcome back. I am Superintendent Jason Manuel, and you're watching GMSD's Spotlight on Excellence. Joining us on our show is Chris Cooper, who is the Curriculum Technology Trainer for Riverdale Elementary School and Houston Middle School. Welcome to the show, and thank you for coming, Chris. Great. Thanks to be here. Tell us a little bit about what you do in the district. Well, I uh, primarily I'm there to support the, the students and the teachers as they teach with technology. So if teachers want to do a, a particular lesson or unit that uses a lot of technology, I'm there to help them in real time in the classroom, support them, as well as in their planning. So if they, as they're planning the lessons, I'm there to help them make sure that they're integrating technology effectively. Um, and just day-to-day -day tech support as well. So, and, and I also do a little bit of uh, professional development after school for the teachers. So you've also gotten involved with STEM. Mm -hmm. Why do you think STEM is important? Well, you know, uh, earlier Missy indicated, you know, she, she sort of explained the, the cross-curricular importance, and, and I think that that's, that's so important, especially, you know, from my perspective with technology, there's such a strong technology component to STEM, and technology is an ever-increasing skill that, that students need. You know, we talk about 21st century skills, and technology is right there at the top of the list, and uh, almost everything you do with STEM can incorporate technology, so it just lends itself very well to, to those technology skills that we need students to have. So you mentioned skills. How do you think those skills are going to prepare them for the future? Well, you know, it, it's impossible for us to really prepare students for everything they're going to need when they graduate. I mean, we can't predict what they're going to need, especially when it comes to technology and, and how communication is going to develop. Uh, but what we can do is teach them how to problem solve, how to think, um, how to think linearly and, and find their way through a problem. So if we can do that, then no matter what they're faced with when they graduate, they'll be ready. So something exciting in our district. Mm -hmm. Uh, the STEM programs at Riverdale and at Houston Middle received 3D printers. Tell us a little bit about the 3D printers that they received. So the 3D printers, um, <coughs> everybody always wants to know about what is a 3D printer and how it works, and I had to learn myself because I was new to 3D printers. And, and um, so the 3D printer works a lot like an inkjet printer at home. So we all have inkjet printers. And an inkjet printer works by making little dots on the paper that when you put all those dots together, it makes a word. Well, a 3D printer works a lot the same way. If you look at this, this little thing here that this was actually printed with a 3D printer, if you look at this, it's actually hundreds of layers of little just um, plastic layers, okay? So if you could just stack the layers up, hundreds of layers from the bottom to the top, and the, the 3D printer basically starts from the top, well, actually from the top, starts building it from the bottom up, okay? So hundreds of layers, so just one swipe after the other until after about 100 times or so, mm -hmm. or a few hundred times, it builds what you see here. Oh, wow. How long did that This take took to, about to four hours. About four hours. Yeah. So if you think of all those hundreds of layers, and each time it just takes one swipe, and each layer is about the thickness of a piece of paper, that takes a pretty long time. Oh, wow. Well, I had a very difficult job this past mm -hmm. Christmas. I had to judge uh, Christmas ornaments that were created on the 3D printers. Tell us how that program was created and how it got started. So I have to give credit for the initial inspiration for this project to Ms. Phipps at the middle school. I think you'll probably hear from her a little bit later. Um, but she came to me and said, this, there's this great um, project from the White House where we can have the kids do 3D ornaments, tie them in with STEM, and there's a contest and Mike can win some prizes. We looked at that and we thought, you know, we could really do a lot of cool stuff with that project, but if we're going to do it right and involve all the, the kids and let every STEM, every student in STEM participate, we need to really kind of stretch it out, take our time, and, and just do this ourselves. So we decided to, um, to do that. We took the project and, uh, you know, added our own components to it, added our own spin to it, and uh, it turned out to be a really, really, really neat thing we had. I think, was it like eight or ten different entries? Oh, yes. Ornaments. This is one of the ornaments here. <coughs> this was actually the winning ornament. Um, this is sort of a fulcrum that has, um, has some, uh, it's sort of a balance, the balance of Christmas, I guess, mm -hmm. of the Christmas gifts. So, 
That was the winning ornament. So it wasn't just programming into a, a computer and all of a sudden you have an ornament. What right. was the process mm -hmm. for the students? Walk us through the steps. Right, so we, what we wanted to do was to make sure that the students were learning with each step along the way. So we said, let's make sure that, let's, let's take a, a concept. This concept is going to start with science. We're gonna have them think of a science theme and combine that with a winter or a holiday theme. So come up with an ornament design that combines those two elements. Then they had to sketch their idea out on paper. So they sort of went from a concept to something that was actual that they could sketch out on paper. Then we said, let's, let's take that and make it tangible. So then they all made clay models of their, of their ornament. And then they had to take the clay ornament and then turn it into a 3D CAD design on the computer. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of learning with each step. But with each step, I think they learned a lot about taking um, a concept or something that was very subjective to making it something physical and tangible. That sounds exciting. Mm -hmm. I wish they had STEM when I was in school. Yeah. Um, so we talked about this being cross-curricular. Mm -hmm. uh, how is this an example of, of it being incorporating different disciplines? So with the theme itself, <clears throat> we told them to combine science with winter. So they had to think about, in terms of science, what were some of the themes and some of the, the things that they've learned through STEM uh, from, the, from the science portion. They had to, of course, there was the, you know, the, the technology and the engineering part of it. They had to, to take that concept and make something real, something tangible out of it. There was also the, the math component was there because you know, we couldn't just let them have free reign over you know the size of the ornament. You know if they made it as big as a tree itself, it would you know it wouldn't fit on the printer. It would take you know years to print. So we said keep them under three inches. And uh, so we had to talk about scale and dimensions. And and if they changed one part of it, they had to change the other. And as they changed one dimension, they had to change all the dimensions. So it was a lot of math involved with the design as well, especially the the CAD portion of it. So they're having to imply everything that they've learned in all of their subject. Areas. Exactly. I mean it, you know it was. Um, it was a good exercise in not just talking about cross-curricular, but putting it to action. So, moving to the real-world application, mm -hmm. not that Christmas ornaments aren't real-world, sure. <laughs> but how are 3D printers being used in real fields? So, 3D printers, uh, you're right, this is really cool that they can do this, but we, we need to get the kids thinking more in terms of real-life applications. Um, 3D printers are used right now with a lot of people in the maker field, a lot of inventors, people who um, who want to build things and come up with new designs. Um, let's say you were an auto in, uh, autom automotive, automotive engineer. Um, and let's say you wanted to construct a, a distributor cap for your car or mm -hmm. for a new, a new design. You could do that on a CAD program and print it out on a 3D printer um, within a few hours. So you could design new parts for something. Um, also in the medical field, uh, if you, you know, prosthetics and artificial limbs, Right now, it's a, there's a big push to use 3D printers to help kids who are missing limbs, fingers or arms. And, um, you know, it's interesting, one in every 1,000 babies are born missing one or more fingers. Um, in fact, the New York Times just published an article this past week about a, uh, a kid named Dawson, five mm -hmm. years old, um, and he was actually given a prosthetic limb from a 3D printer, something he probably couldn't have done without that. Oh, Chris, this, I, I can't wait to see what the next step are in our programs with the 3D printers, but thank you for coming out today. Thank you. And spending time with us. Enjoyed it, thank you. When we return from our break, we will talk with one of our STEM teachers from Houston Middle School. Please stay with us. Which planet are we living on? Earth. Earth. Right here. What do you think it would be like to teach? Chances are, you have no idea. Teachers today are breaking down obstacles, finding innovative ways to instill old lessons, proving that greatness can be found in everyday places, and that you don't need to be famous to be unforgettable. That's what it's like to teach. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. Face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty. Time to call 911 and get them to a hospital immediately. Learn the body language and spot a stroke fast. 
You are watching Germantown Municipal Television, your source for everything Germantown. Welcome back with us. Now is Joy Phipps from Houston Middle School, and we are talking about the STEM program. Thank you, Ms. Phipps, for being here. Hi, thank you. Tell us a little bit about your background. Well, my background is with Houston Middle School. From when I left um, University of Memphis, I've only taught at Houston Middle for 13 years now. Um, 12 of those years was in the English Language Arts Department in various class levels. And last year was my first year to join in I&I &I or the STEM class. So you mentioned the I&I, &I, which is Inventions and Innovations. Uh, tell us a little bit about the seventh grade I&I &I classes. How many sections are offered? Well, this year we were able to offer nine sections, which is a large increase from the past, um, where we have, you know, um, I believe our last year, for the past four years, we have offered six sections. Mm -hmm. And then we've brought in new teachers that um, are, you know, new to our school and bring in some new ideas to I&I. &I. Wow. Well, tell us a little bit about the class. How is it different from other elective classes that you would take at Houston Middle School? This class is unlike any other class at Houston Middle School. It is completely project-based and student-led. So each unit, what we'll do is come up with, like Missy said, a problem and to present the kids with and allow them to do a little bit of research and some brainstorming. They go all the way through the engineering design process. They come up with ideas and build prototypes, and then we get to the fun part where we get to test it and mess it all up and record our data and then modify, make changes, and test it again. And we could keep going on and on. Each project could keep going on and on all year, but we have to draw a line and move on to something new. Well, you mentioned the projects. Tell us a, a little bit about some of the lessons that are taught in that class. What are the things that they're doing? We have done so many um, fun and varied activities this year. We started out the year with a really messy project called <clears throat> the Edible Car, just to kind of introduce the kids to what is engineering design and getting them used to kind of working in groups and working you know, in specific roles within a group. Then we moved on into creating an aquifer and kind of learning more about how our Memphis water um, is made and what makes it so unique. Um, then we went into, during Halloween, we tried to design like a monster candy bag that would hold as much candy um, that would weigh as much as possible. And um, we've moved on into robots and for the end of the year we have a lot um, of fun activities such as roller coaster design and um, doing the egg drop and things like that. What is your favorite? You mentioned a whole lot of lessons. Do you have one that stands out? I would say um, normally my favorite thing is whatever we're currently working on because I get so inspired seeing the kids um, problem solving and thinking of new ways to solve a problem that I never even imagined before, um, asking me a whole lot of questions um, and kind of challenging me to learn more. So right now, we, um, we just finished up robots, and that's really kind of um, close to my interest level because um, this year I actually started um, a first Lego League robot club. Mm -hmm. And um, so we um, are a group of 10. Um, 10 kids got together, and we were able to um, learn how to kind of complete all these challenges. They have a large table and they've got to kind of figure out how to program it through and things like that. So seeing my, all my students actually working with robots um, inspired me um, for new things that I could bring to my club and some new recruits I hope to get on board next year. So tell us a little bit about 3D printers. We heard about those. What are ways that students besides the Christmas ornaments, what have they asked to use the 3D printers for? Well, um, a lot of the students had never um, even seen a 3D printer before except for on Grey's Anatomy. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it's been pretty limited uh, in the past because of the cost. Mm -hmm. um, and now that the cost has been brought down where it's a little bit cheaper, um, not a lot cheaper, but a little bit cheaper for us to get <coughs> one, um, I think that they're seeing some ways that we can use it. Um, we did have a bioengineer come and visit our classroom and talk about how he had made um, he used a 3D printer to make his own prototypes and designing um, bone plates. And so we're hoping to take that kind of idea and um, challenge our kids to think more outside of just making fun toys or ornaments mm -hmm. into um, maybe thinking about making a prosthetic arm for Barbie or something like that. Because we want them to start thinking like, what are some ways that engineers use this in the medical field? And so that's hopefully coming up after spring break. So you talked about 
coming up after spring break. What are other next steps that you see happening in Houston Middle School STEM program? Well, the, our next biggest thing is we are planning um, a STEM staying summer camp. And what we're hoping to do is um, get kids from GMSD all the way from our incoming sixth graders to our outgoing eighth graders to come to Houston this summer for a week and um, just kind of really delve into some STEM things. Our, um, our whole theme is going to be watch out Mars, here we come. So we're going to deal with Mars rovers, we're going to deal with um, rockets and rocket design with our 3D printers. We're going to hopefully take a field trip to Huntsville to see the um, U.S. Space and Rocket um, team and I'd love to even uh, maybe Skype with an astronaut. Um, I wanted to take just a second to, to ask any Houston High STEM, um, STEM student if they're interested in coming over and maybe getting you know, a few um, volunteer hours or helping out or just joining in. They're definitely welcome. Oh, wow, that's exciting. Do you think there are opportunities for uh, citizens who may be retired from the science field or math field to interact with you at Houston Middle School? What ways do you think we could plug in people from the community? Oh, STEM? I would invite anyone who has a STEM career to contact me because we have already had so many wonderful speakers come in from the Shelby County Sheriff's Department brought in their um, bomb, uh, bomb squad and how they use robots. Like I said, we've had a bioengineer from Pfizer come in. Um, I've been contacted by um, one of my students' mothers who um, is like an electrical engineer working um, with wheelchairs. I mean, the thing that my students are so fascinated with is that engineering is everywhere. It's not just people who build bridges. It's, it's everywhere. So we talked about the Christmas ornament program. Did you have students who made Christmas ornaments? Yes, and I had a bunch of students, everyone wanted them printed, and um, we were able to take, we had just, like Chris said, we had such a short window to, you know, take part in that contest where um, I did have a few kids. I said, look, here's the contest, here's the software to use it, go home and see what you can do, because we have some kids that can figure things out, but just like with the 3D printer, I mean, they're, this is stuff that normally you imagine a student being able to come in and know so much more about technology than an adult. But during that time, I mean, we were both just, we were all learning it as we went. Well, I had a hard job of judging these <laughs> ornaments. Were there some that stood out for you? Was, were there some that you thought, oh, that was an exceptional application? Yes, the ones that I loved were the ones that actually, because I guess seeing how difficult it was, were the ones that took the smallest details, you know, where they would have like a cutout and then they might have something inside of it. Uh, because I really saw them struggling to figure out like when in the world, how can I get, how can I get all these pieces together? Because when you're looking at something in 3D, I mean, they're, they're really able to move the object. And it would look one way in this direction, and then they'd have to come over it to kind of pull all the pieces together. So it was fascinating. A wonderful application. Well, once again, thank you for coming today. Uh, I know that you enjoy teaching the INI &I classes, and I'm looking forward to uh, expanding those to, oh, to eighth grade, sixth grade at Houston Middle School. Our time is up for this edition of GMSD Spotlight on Excellence. I would like to thank our guests for visiting with us and sharing their thoughts and insights. If you want to learn more about the STEM program, Visit the GMSD School webpage at www.gmsdk12.org. Thank you for joining us today. If you'd like more information on today's program, visit www.gmtvonline.org. Be sure to join us next month when we will talk about the Houston High School Honors Academy. Until then, I am Jason Manuel. Thank you for watching.